This is my office slash guest bedroom. It is just not working for me anymore. It is time to create a space of my own. I am Travis and this is how I do things and I'm about to show you how to finish a room in your basement. There are lots of steps to building a room in your basement. So I'm going to be breaking this up into lots of videos and the first video is going to cover planning and design. The first thing I need to do is take a look at my space, which is located through this door at the end of my hallway. Well, here it is. What do you think? It may not look like much yet, but it will. Now, before I start any of my work, I need to make sure my basement is a good place to finish. You're gonna to wanna to do a radon test, and I put a link to a DIY home kit down below. Radon is a radioactive gas found in some basements, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have safe levels in your basement if you're gonna be spending any time down here because it's known to cause lung cancer. If your levels are too high, you'll want to have a radon reduction system installed like this one. My builder installs them standard in all their homes. When the system is installed, the basement floor is sealed, so no radon can leak through, including the sump pit. Then a hole is drilled in the concrete and this pipe is installed. This pipe goes up to the attic where there's a pump. That pump creates a vacuum, which pulls the radon up from the drain tile and safely out of your home. Next, check your walls and floors for any cracks bigger than an eighth of an inch. If you see any, fill them in with polyurethane caulking. I'll be caulking the expansion joints as well as the joint between the slab and the wall. This will help prevent radon, insects, and water from coming into your basement. I tried to use a self-leveling caulking around the perimeter and it was just too thin and the crack just kept soaking it up. For larger cracks like this one, I would go with something thicker like this product. After two coats of this, I was good to go. I put a link to both of these products down below. Speaking of water, you also need to check for any signs of moisture on your floors or walls. Even if you don't see any signs of moisture, be sure to check the humidity of your basement and then if you need to, get a large dehumidifier. Ideally, your relative humidity should be between 30 and 40%, but you should be good with anything below 50%. Then test the floors and walls by taping a piece of clear plastic to them. If you don't see any condensation on the plastic after a day, you should be good. Once you're happy with the condition of your space, you'll need to take measurements of the space and look for anything that might make it hard to frame off the room. I also want to look around for anything I might need access to later. You'll need access to any HVAC dampers and water or gas valves. I also try my best not to cover up any plumbing if possible. A lot of people like to make their basements look just like the upstairs part of their home. Well, I take a slightly different approach in that function is more important to me than form which is why I'll be doing a painted ceiling with no drywall, like I've done here in the rest of my basement. In some cases, you can move HVAC or plumbing into different parts of the basement that will stay unfinished. Seeing as I'm going with an exposed painted ceiling, any ductwork, electrical, or plumbing will just get painted black. I have a lot of things along this outside wall, so I'm going to leave a narrow walkway right here so I can access all of it later. On the other side of this wall is a bathroom. So this wall has a lot of plumbing and some electrical junction boxes in it. So what I'm gonna do is build a closet right here that will sort of cover some of that stuff up but also give me access to it later. This room will be an office, not a bedroom, so I'm not required to have an egress window. If you're building a basement bedroom, you must have a method of exiting the basement in case of a fire. Be sure to check the building codes in your area. I have an egress window in this part of my basement so I can get out quickly if I need to. If you need an egress window, be sure you can fit the right size window to meet building code. Having an egress window added is messy and I recommend having that done early in the building process. When you have a pole like this in the middle of your room, it's best to try to frame around it to hide the pole. Plus, I have a situation where the door opens this way, I'm gonna need a place to put the light switch, so this wall will be the perfect place. So I figured out that my wall is going to end right about here, but I still have a lot of ductwork here to deal with, so what I think I'm gonna do is create a soffit to cover all this stuff up with three recessed lights that will help light a desk and maybe a future workbench. I also like to add crown molding to the unfinished painted ceiling because it covers the edge of the drywall and makes it feel more intentional. Now we have the dimensions of our space. We know that we don't have any water issues and we know what obstacles we need to work around. So now we can start designing our room. There are lots of free tools you can use to do this on your computer. I like to use floorplanner.com. It allows you to design the space, add furniture, and then even do a virtual walkthrough in 3D. I put a link down below. 
being able to add the furniture to your design is really nice because it gives you the opportunity to see how the pieces of furniture will fit in your space as well as help you design your electrical and plumbing. When you plan your outside wall, be sure to account for the extra thickness of closed cell foam board insulation. I like using this foam board because it's easy to install, mold resistant, and it's considered a vapor barrier. I'll show you how to install it in my next video. Try to think about where you might want to put lights, light switches, and outlets. In addition to that, also take a look at your circuit breaker box and make sure there's enough room in case you need to add more breakers. Assess your ductwork and figure out how you might get a vent or two in your room to get AC and heat. Now my office isn't going to require any plumbing, but if your room is, make sure you know where you can tap into any existing water feed lines and drains. Once you plan everything out, be sure to get all the proper permits before starting your work. Take this process one step at a time and you shouldn't get overwhelmed. I also like to put things into a calendar so I can start to figure out when things need to get done and then make sure they're done on time. I put a list of some of the things you might need to do in the list down below. I also like to make a Google Keep list so I can check things off as they're completed. And if you don't want to do all the work yourself and you plan to hire subcontractors, be sure to get at least three quotes for each thing you need to have done. And then don't hire a contractor just because they're the cheapest. What you're looking for is the best cheap contractor. I hope you guys enjoyed my video. If you did, please make sure to check out another awesome video up here as well as subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss my next video on how to install insulation and fire blocking. See you guys.